Okay, so in the last video, uh, we talked about we're actually going to add some interactivity to this one. And this is going to be where this stuff gets fun because what we're going to be doing ultimately is testing to make sure this stuff works, right? I mean, sure, we want to test to make sure this stuff shows up. But we want to make sure that the code does what it's supposed to do. So uh, the first thing we're going to be doing is testing to make sure that this button will increment when we click it. Now, obviously, it's not going to yet because we haven't written that code, but there's a great reason to start your test first and then write the code to make sure your test passes, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, what we want to do is import another thing from React Testing Library, and this is going to be fire event. Now, fire event is a, a method or a function here that allows us to fire specific events. And it's really interesting how they've done it. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about it once we get into input changing and stuff like that. But fire event is something unique to React Testing Library, and it tries to basically keep things as, you know, um, native as possible with all of this stuff. That's sort of the mantra here. So let's go ahead and what we want to do is Sure, the first thing we're going to do is expect that it's a button. Then we're going to expect that it starts at two. Next thing, we're going to fire an event. Now, fire event has several different methods inside of here, one of which is click. Okay, so we're going to fire the click event. And inside of here, we need to pass it something. And we're going to want to pass it the counter button. Now, this counter button is getting a little crowded, right? We've done a find for the counter button once here. We did it another time here, and we'd be doing it a third time here. So let's go ahead and take this up a notch here, and let's go ahead and do a const uh, counter button is equal to, and then we can simply just grab it by get by test ID once. We can do it once here. Now we can replace this whole get by test ID thing with simply just counter button dot tag name as well as counter button dot text content and simply now fire event click counter button. Okay, so as we get here, you can see our tests are getting more tight, more concise, and uh, they're definitely getting a lot nicer. Okay, so all we did is find the button itself here by get by test ID. We have that button. We're checking its tag name. We're checking its text content. And next, we're just firing an event on here. And that event is going to be click. Okay, so if we save this, you'll see, hey, uh, everything works, right? Stuff all works. Now, one of the cool things here, we can check to see if the button was fired by then t checking to see the text content, right? Because, you know, this is a counter button. Every time we click it, it's going to add one. So if we click this button, we should expect counter button text content to be one. And likewise, if we, let's go ahead and duplicate this line and click it again, Let's a little pair of these together here. If we click it again, you'd expect it to be two, therefore confirming that every time you click it, we just gain one, okay? If we clicked it and set it to one once, you could maybe uh, fake that text by having it just set the state to one. But if you click it twice and know that it goes one and then to two, you know that it's incrementing by one every time, okay? So we click fire event, and then we expect it to be equal to one. We click fire event and expect it to be equal to two, and we have some failures. You can see if we check, we have our red over here. We can check, and you can see it expected the value to be one. And in fact, it received zero. Okay, so part of the wonderful thing about writing tests is it always tells you what it expected to find and what it did find. Therefore, you sort of know when there's an issue what the issue could be, all right? And it helps you debug code. This is one of the reasons why people love writing tests, okay? So let's go ahead and check out this counter here. Let's figure out how we can make it actually count. I'm going to head to counter.js, and we're going to go ahead and add a method on here. And this method is simply just going to be, uh, we're going to have this be um, count. Count is going to be equal to an arrow function like this. Now, in this case, what we want to be doing is a this.set state, okay? And this.set state is going to have an arrow function inside of here. You may have seen this syntax. This is the syntax they're recommending to do now, in which we have access to the prev props or prev state, I guess, because this is state. So we're going to be accessing the previous state, right? 
and the previous state is then going to be used in the setting of the new state. So inside of this object that we're returning here, um, we want to actually wrap this in parentheses like this. Check out the three parentheses here. Okay, we have um, uh, an arrow function here that's returning something. It's returning an object. This is a key point because if you just have it be a uh, curly bracket here, it's going to expect another return value. So again, parentheses, curly bracket, the curly bracket, double parentheses. Now inside of this object, we're simply going to have the count value and the count value is going to be equal to the prev state. In this case, that prev state value dot count is going to be equal to zero and we're going to add one to it. Therefore, every single time we click this, it's going to get the new value. You can see what it did is took care of the parentheses around our previous state here. Now all we need to do is add an on click. You can see our tests are still failing. And I'm actually gonna move these tests over here so we can see these populate in real time and you're gonna be blown away. What we're gonna do on this button here is we're going to put this on a new line and we're going to add an on click. And this on click is going to be this dot count. Save this and check it out. Our tests pass. This is awesome. This is super cool. We just tested some legit functionality. And if we were to change this to count by two, our tests are all going to fail. So we know that this thing is working the way we wanted it to because we wrote our test initially to say, hey, every time you click it, it should get another one on the list here. Now, what's also cool about this is debug, right? We had this debug way up top here. You know that debug start out as zero. If we throw this debug down here again, and we want to output another debug, you can see that we get the first one where the state is zero and the second one where the state is two after we've clicked it twice. Again, this is extremely excellent because this is what the user will see. And notice how I don't even have to fire up this component in any sort of React front end context. I don't have to fire up this application. I don't have to do anything, but I know exactly what the user is going to see on their end. Now, it's always nice to visually confirm these things, but for the most part, we're going to be spending a lot of time in jest here and check it out. We now have a button that counts every time you click it. We've tested this correctly and it all works. Now, I'm going to leave this mostly as is, but I'm going to comment out these debug statements. That way you can have this stuff in here and again, check it out. Now I mentioned before that um, we, we had this cleanup function. So this is the last little bit I want to do before we move on from this component here and start doing some integration testing in React. Okay. So what I want to do here is above our test, we're going to say after each. And after each is a function that runs inside of your your tests. And after every single test, this is a function that's going to run. Now we're simply just going to put clean up in here. Now you could have it do all sorts of things. Maybe if you're working with an actual database, you could have your after each uh, remove things or add things to the database or whatever, right? But clean up here is just going to unmount everything from the DOM, giving us each time it runs a test, a clean slate. Okay. So it's nice to have this. And again, if we want to keep this after each from having a red underline, we can go to our ESLint file and give this a, we can have this in the globals. We can have this be after each true. That way it doesn't uh, get angry about this not being defined anywhere. So yeah, look at this. This is awesome. We now have some interactivity. We're testing it again. The big thing here is that we are testing what the user sees in the DOM. We are not testing reacts state itself. Notice how there's no, Hey, what was the state at this given point? No, none of that. And that's sort of the best practices that react testing library really enforces. It doesn't even give you the option of checking the state. Okay. Uh, so this is brilliant and I absolutely love this. This should be a nice little way that you can be eased into react testing. We now have an event that we've triggered and we are now checking to see this button's state. Now what we're going to be doing in the next couple of videos is we're going to be doing uh, what's called integration testing and we're going to have a form and we're going to expect this form to be loaded and it's going to be a form that's a component within a component and then we're going to get started testing our actual movie db app 
with some fake data. And we're going to talk a lot about that mock stuff that we had some time on before we got started with React components. It's all going to come together and you're going to be testing like a a crazy person soon and all of your components are going to be wonderful and i'm going to show you some of the real world benefits as we refactor a lot of the code in this application and you're going to see the test break we're going to fix the code and then you're going to see the test pass and everything is going to make a ton of sense you're going to have all of this brilliant lights going off in your head as this is the kind of stuff that i want to see happen in my code base okay so as we continue to go here we're going to do an integration test using react and we're going to get going with some form components and then we're also going to talk about all sorts of more stuff like snapshot testing so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one